Greetings, welcome back to Pink Oddbird. Today, what I thought we would do is use these really cute little vintage seed packet digitals that are available in my Etsy shop because I'm kind of working on a little bit of a spring garden, vegetable garden, floral kind of mini collection and I forgot that I had these and I wanted to make a little um, tiny journal using these as covers. So I thought that I would come on today and uh, make some little journals with you guys out of these as well as some papers that I've been harvesting <laughs> for a really long time and we need to start getting some of this stuff used up. So let's go ahead and get started. So again, these are available in my Etsy shop. I will link it down in the description box below. And when everything is ready to go, I will make a story probably or a post on the community board and let you guys know when all this stuff is gonna be going up. So let's get started. So I'm gonna just start, I was originally going to attach two and two and just make them that way. But then I decided that I would rather, you know, um, just use each one of these as a journal cover and um, so that way we'll have like eight little mini journals to work with. And I'm gonna cut them down as they were when they were scanned. Um, but I think also I wanna make these like a little bit more rugged. So we will do that in a second here. This one is a little tricky because the whole seed packet was white. <laughs> I'm going to move these little cutoffs out of the way. I feel like this is part of the contributor to why your desk gets messy so quickly. Like, I'm convinced of it. <laughs> so let's get it out of the way now. All right, so for these, let's see how tall these are. Let me grab my ruler. So there's four that are one height and then four that are a little bit smaller. Okay, that's fine. So what I will do is measure these. So for these, I think I want to just use regular plain old cardstock. So I said four by five. So five inches tall and four inches across, which means we need it to be eight inches this way, and then five, like that. Well, this is four inches. We'll work with this just because it's a scrap and I want to use that also, but we'll let this one be how it is. So I'm just gonna fold it in half. Okay, so this will be kind of like this. All right, so I'm gonna do this for the other um, seven. Well, minus the scrap. Uh, and I think I have another scrap. Yep, I have two. And I'll show you how we can put these uh, together. So, five inches tall, four inches wide. So we can get two of them out of eight and a half by 11. I don't know if this is what I did the first time around, but if I did it, this is what I should have done. <laughs> so five by eight. Okay, so there's another. I don't know why that seems wider than it should. I might cut it down. Just a little, maybe three and three quarters. <clears throat> Yeah, I kind of like that better. Three and three quarters. Yeah, three and three quarters is better for me. Also, I wanted to say that I saw um, a video by Gray Fox Lane, and she's the one who inspired these little um, seed packet journals. And I believe that she made hers maybe out of authentic seed packets. Um, and they turned out really cool, so I'll link her video down in the description box below. All right, so I wonder... If I take one of these scraps and just fold it in half, is it big enough 
Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll cut this to three and three quarters. And for this one, we'll make it a notebook that goes this way. Okay, so nice and simple. So I'm glad because that helps those uh, scraps get used up. Okay, so these were the ones that were a little bit smaller. So I might need to cut this down a little bit more. Yeah, maybe to about, let's try three and a half. Yeah, three and a half by four and four quarters, four and three quarters. <laughs> yeah. So three and a half by uh, four and three quarters. Okay, so these scraps I might have to use elsewhere, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, I think, well, this one, since there's so much white at the bottom, it might work. Let's just see. believe so. Just have to cut off a little bit of that flower, but sometimes we make sacrifices. Okay, so that's cute. Yeah, so that'll be another, I mean it could go this way too, but so I'm just cutting some of these down so that they actually fit onto whatever scraps that I have here, and I believe this will work. So cool, so I got the scraps used up as well. Awesome, so we're done cutting those down. All right, next I'm gonna just get some of my little edges roughened up. You can do this with your scissors. Um, if you do, just be careful. It's kind of the same idea. You just wanna go like this and just rough it up here and there just to make it look a little bit more grungy. So again, if you're using your scissors for that, just be careful. Some of the packets were a little, um, you know, they weren't perfect, so I tried to scan them the best that I could, um, but I don't really mind just cutting off that little sliver of imperfection, and if you're going to do this um, distressing technique, it doesn't really matter anyway. Alright, so we've got them all uh, grunged up on the edges there. I'm going to grab some distress ink and this stuff is optional but if you would like to um, we're going to go ahead and distress these. I'm going to use vintage photo. As you can see adding the distress ink really just you know takes it to another level of grunginess. If you don't want the like vintage grungy look then you can skip this step. But I really like the way the seed packets turn into like just really old looking once you distress them. Are any of you gardeners out there? Are you guys uh, all excited if you're in a in an area where it's uh, springtime and you're able to? get started on your garden. I know that I have a few friends who like to garden and stuff and um, wondering if anybody else out there is a real gardener. I don't really do much gardening but I would think I would like to learn eventually someday because I do have some um, flowers that I particularly fancy that I would like to have in a garden of my own one day. Um, so yeah I think it's kind of um, interesting you know and it's kind of cool too because um, Everyone is in like a different region, I guess, and so there are plants that are specifically made to grow like in your own climate, obviously, right? So um, I think that's really neat. So what kind of plants do you like to grow uh, where you're at? Leave a comment in the, in the uh, section down below. I'd be really interested to know. I'm in Southern California, and I don't know, our weather is like really weird, but I know that things do grow here. I, we have the poppy fields. <laughs> So, um, yeah, 
I think that would just be kind of fun to talk about down below. Leave a comment and let me know. It's still relatively early here. And I really wanted some coffee. All right, so next, I'm just gonna take a little bit of my glue stick and go around the perimeter of the back side of the seed packet and stick these down. Now I am going to stitch on these. So if you are not going to stitch on ones that you're making, um, I would suggest using a glue that's um, you know stronger and you do want to make sure you go from edge to edge. So cute. <laughs> I love these already. We haven't even put papers inside of them. So what I decided to do for my papers is I have a bunch of like different types of paper and particularly I have like a lot of like wallpaper and um, wrapping paper and things like that and I'm like okay you know what it's getting to be a little bit ridiculous so I think we need to start start using it so a lot of them are floral so of course I felt like it would be a perfect time to use them So I'm just going to take these over to my machine and get these covers uh, stitched down. I'll be back. While I was sewing these, I decided that I also really like this Aster one. I just really like the faded, grungy look of it. Alright, so now I'm just going to cut these little strings off because I don't think we need those unless you want it to be um, stringy and thready. That's up to you. I think we're pretty much good. All right, so now what I think we need to start doing, look how cute these look already. <laughs> I love them. So I think what we can start doing now is getting some a signature prepared for each one of these. So we're gonna put these aside and start getting our papers together. I'm gonna keep them close though because I know I'm gonna need to measure these again. Okay, so what I have is a little bit of coffee stained paper. If you have scraps, this is the perfect time to use your scraps. And in fact, I have my scrap box right here next to me. And it looks like I do have some little random scraps as well. So I'm gonna pull some of these out and we'll use those up as well in addition. And so some of the other papers I have are like these, um, wrapping papers and they're all really pretty but as you can see they all have like really like floral elements to them so I want to use some of these as well I also have this bag here I maybe want to use this some kind of way but it really fits with the theme I've been saving this forever and it's got like embossed florals everywhere so I think that would be fun I've got garden books here that I'm almost done with I've got some <laughs> Amazon brown paper packaging and then uh, another this paper is actually really cool this is one that I oh you know I have something hanging here that probably should move this is one that I picked up I want to say in an antique market it's actually two there's the pink one and then there's the purple one so this paper is beautiful so I might add a little bit of this into the, the little mini floral garden whatever journals and then I have some tissue paper that I've been saving, so I want to use this as well. And lastly, I have um, this little roll of wallpaper, textured wallpaper. It's really cool. Um, I'm going to use some of that. And I have a little bit of like floral um, fabric scraps that we can also pop into these. So let's start cutting all this stuff down. And then like I said, I do have my scrap box right here next to me. So I think this is a good time to dig into that as well because we are making small books here and uh, these little small papers and offcuts that we all have would be uh, perfectly a perfect time to use those. So here we go. We've got eight little books to make. All right, so I found a good amount of papers, I think, that we can get started with. So I'm just going to start making signatures. I need to know how many of those horizontal books I have also. Let's 
see, there's one, two, three. I mean, they're vertical, they're vertical. <laughs> so there's four of them. Four. Okay, maybe we should move these aside. Let's add a little bit of ledger in there. From 1922. Oof. I will probably grab my tape to reinforce this because it's really old. Here we are with all of the little booklets. So they're pretty much all filled up uh, with as many papers I want to put in them. They all feel so like good and chunky. Uh, what I think I'm going to just do now is I was like tearing like some of the bottoms of these just so that it would have like a just a rusted rustic kind of look at the bottom. Uh, you know, just like torn edges like that. But I'm going to take my trimmer and any pages that are sticking out like on the sides or the top and bottom, depending on what kind of booklet it is, I'm just going to clean up the edges. So I'm just going to grab my paper trimmer and do that now. Just cleaning it up just like that is good to me. And I don't want them to really be perfect because they are kind of scrappy. So, um... Yeah, so I'm just going to carry on and finish cleaning up the rest of these, and I'll be back. All right, so we've got them pretty much cut down as good as I want them to be. And so I think what I want to do now is I've got a lot of, like I said, floral scraps. And so I was thinking I might go in and sew a little bit of um, just some details into these. And not a lot, because like I said, they're already kind of just like you know, matchbook, matchbook chunky on their own. So, um, I think I just want to add a little bit of detail with the sewing machine and then we're going to call these, uh, we're going to get these actually stitched in and then we'll call them done. So let's go ahead. I, I'm just going to do the sewing off camera. I just, I don't really think there's much benefit of you seeing me do that. Um, it's just going to be very, uh, light detailing. So I'll be back. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. <laughs> All right, so we've got them cut down. We've got some sewing details in them. So I think at this point now, I wanna get all of these bound. So I'm just gonna take, I was gonna do this with Baker's Twine, but I think I'm just gonna use my real thread with these. Um, so I'm just gonna start getting these um, all stitched together. So let's go ahead and do that now. So you can get your little booklets bound up in whatever method is most comfortable for you. I am going to just do a simple three hole pamphlet stitch on these since all of them are relatively small books. So I'm just going to find my center and actually, one second here, I have some uh, bits of things out here from uh, the rest of the garden books. So what I think is maybe like we'll take a little piece of paper here 
And I do want to cut this down a bit. I knew there were two there. <laughs> so I just went ahead and cut this down. And I think I am going to, well, you know what? I'm just gonna snip it down a little bit more. And we'll put this in the center. And what we're gonna do in the end is close this up and we'll cut a little notch out of there and we'll make that a pocket in the center. Okay, so once you have all of your pages in here placed uh, in your booklet, so all I'm gonna do is take my little clip here and take my thread, load it up on the needle, and then I'm going to get my awl and poke the three holes that I need and do my three hole stitch here. Okay. And then I am gonna trim this little excess down. All right, and then we'll come back in the end and we'll get this little pocket uh, closed up here. All righty. Okay, so we have all of these little books bound. Now, um, the next thing that I wanted to do was get these little pockets sealed up. Um, I do want to just see one thing really quick because if you remember in the beginning, I had this little bag here. And what I was thinking is, wouldn't it be cool if I could make some tags out of this and we can use the tags for the center of the book. So I'm gonna start cutting this down and... All right, I might save the other side to use as a cover. So I'm gonna just cut this top piece off just because it has these little notches where the string, where the rope is. And this piece is kind of really thick anyway. So we need to get rid of this. Like so. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I have my little tag making die cutter thingy here. I'm just gonna Maybe you start by cutting a strip of these out. Hopefully that's wide enough and it's not. So here's what I think. So I've cut out a couple strips. Now I do have a lot of um, scraps that I believe will fit this die just barely. So here's what I think. If we kind of get an estimate of how long this tag is, like that. So if I put a little bit of glue, maybe, just to hold it in place, okay, and then Cut it down. <clears throat> I'm gonna put the die on. Okay, let's see if this works. Oh, it does, okay. I can always do a little bit of stitching detail here. I'm not worried about that. So I think this makes a cute little tag. <laughs> I really do like how these are coming out. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of stitching detail just to finish these off. But I'm gonna make a few more so that we can fill up the rest of the books. And I will see you back here. I'm gonna keep digging for some scraps. <laughs> Okay, we're getting there everybody. 
So I've just gone and stitched around all these little tags. And then now what I would like to do is on each one of these books, I just want to make sure they're even Steven. I'm going to take my little one inch circle punch here. And I like to open this so that I can see. Well, hopefully it'll work because this book is really tiny. Yeah, it just barely fits. <laughs> and I'm just going to take a notch out there. And so now we have like a little notch for a pocket. And then, oh, where's my glue? Here. I'm going to take this glue on either side and close it up. And then we have a little pocket for our tag. So cute. <laughs> Okay, so there we go. So I'm gonna get that done for the rest of these other seven and I'll meet you back here. But the rest of these are all done um, for as far as everything that we did here on the video today. And um, these are really fun and easy, super simple to make. As you can see, you can make a few of these in a day just like I did. And like I said, I'd been wanting to make some of these for a while out of my little seed packet printables way back when I saw Gray Fox Lane make hers. So shout out to Gray Fox Lane um, for the inspiration. Definitely check her out and um, check my Etsy store for these digital images if you would like to make some of these just like I have. So this, like I said, is going to be included in the little collection that I have of other spring and garden books. So more information on that is going to be coming up soon. And that is going to wrap it up for me for now. Be sure to stay tuned because you never know what direction this odd flock of ours is heading into. And until next time, toodaloo.